Hello, my name is Matt Forrest and welcome to Learn Spatial SQL. Today we'll be talking about some of the most basic query structures for SQL. Not Spatial SQL specifically yet, but just SQL. Um, and we'll dive in and talk a little bit more about how you can use that and get started on learning Spatial SQL with we'll learning the basics as well. Before we get in, um, just a few things. You can actually subscribe to the full course playlist by clicking uh, this green button here. If you want to subscribe to future videos and updates, uh, go ahead and click the red button and the blue button you can click uh, on LinkedIn. Um, and I share some different ideas around all things geospatial there on a regular basis. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the entire sort of uh, roadmap for this uh, these series of videos. Uh, the first we'll talk about is basic queries, that's where we are today. But in future videos, we'll talk about data types and functions, modifying tables, joins, aggregations, subqueries, and, and CTEs, or common table expressions, and window functions. And these are some of the most common pieces that I've used for SQL um, in my day-to-day -day work. So this is the sort of the roadmap that can help you learn some of the core elements of SQL and help you carry that forward. And then in a future series, we'll actually talk about the spatial components of that. So that's sort of our roadmap and you know, this is step one here today. Uh, for today, this is sort of our, our roadmap of what we're gonna discuss in the context of this video, uh, starting with the select statement. So this is your most basic query, uh, select star from table. Right. It's the simplest syntax. It's kind of your 10 and 2 if you're thinking of the driving position in a car. Um, it's, it's something you'll, you'll always go back to. Right. So uh, select is basically telling you that you want to retrieve data from some specific table. Uh, star is telling you that it's going to select all the columns in the table. Uh, from is going to basically say, here's where I want to grab that data from, and then you provide a table name. Now this is sort of generic SQL syntax, depending on if you're using PostGIS or a different data warehouse or um, sort of a SQL server. This may look slightly different, and some of the components over the series of this course might look slightly different. So in those places, I'll do my best to call those out. But this is going to be pretty standard anywhere you go. Additionally, you can actually select specific columns uh, from a table that you want to grab. So in this case, we're going to grab just the geometry and the category. You separate those by a comma, and you can actually pull those um, specific columns so that this query would actually re just return two columns from that table. So instead of just everything, it grabs two. You can grab as many as you want. I will also talk about sort of creating columns on the fly as well. So this is what's known as an alias, right? In this query, we're selecting star, right, everything from the table, as well as another column, and just giving it a new name, a temporary name. Uh, so we use column as col, just a short name, and it's just limited to the scope of this query. We're not creating a new column, it's just going to create an, a copy, effectively, of that column as a new column. You can also use functions to do this and many other things, so we'll talk about that in some future videos as well. But basically, three different ways to grab data from a table. Next, we'll talk about where. So where is when you limit data, where you put a condition on the data you want to return. So in this query, we're actually, once again, grabbing everything from our table, our fake table name here, and we're grabbing everything where the state equals, uh, or correlates to a string called NY, or New York, where, where I currently am. So that will just grab the rows where that column value, and the column being state, is equal to NY. Now you can use where in some different ways here. So we're actually going to say where the state does not equal. And why? So you can use a different operator there. It doesn't have to just be equal. It can be not equals. And there's actually a lot of different operators here. There's equals, not equals. There's greater than, less than, greater to or equal, um, less than or equal to. So there's many different operators you can actually use within a where clause. Um, so take a look at those uh, in this specific sort of uh, setting or the uh, flavor of SQL that you're using. And finally, you can actually do some of this, like I said, there's less thans or equal than, and so you can use any sort of data type. If that's a date, a string, a number, and sometimes even a geometry, right? You can use these in these where clauses. And we'll talk about how to use those in a spatial context later, but just for now, when you see where, which follows the from, so select star from table where, then that means you're limiting or returning a subset of the data. So limit and offset. So a limit is basically telling me you that you only want to grab a certain number of rows from a table, right? So in this case, we're selecting star from table. We're going to limit that number by 10, right? So we're actually going to limit the number of rows you actually want. And that will just return basically the first 10 rows from that table in the order that they are currently living in within that table. Now, offset basically does the same thing, but just offsets it. So in this case, we're going to limit 10 and offset by 10. So we're going to return 10 total rows, but basically starting from row number 11 to 20, 
in this case. So um, there is also an order in which these operations take place. Uh, if you check below, um, I have like a full post that kind of walks through some of these different components and, and links. This video isn't super comprehensive in terms of going in depth into all these different concepts, but at least this gives you a start to start to understand these. Next, we'll take a look at order by. So in this query, we're going to select everything from our table, but we're going to order it. We're going to reshuffle the rows in the way we know which we're returning those rows. So in this case, we're going to order by name, right? Let's imagine we have a name column, maybe names of states or provinces or cities, anything like that, or pretend it's a string in this case. So this allows you to order that. You can use, once again, any data type. You can use a string, a number, a date. Um, different columns will order in different ways, but that's just, uh, you can use basically any data type. Now you can also pick the way in which you want to order them. So this is in descending order, right? Uh, by default, they're ordered in ascending order, but you can choose or call that out specifically ascending or descending using ASE or DSE. So in this query, we're gonna select everything from our table, order it by name and order it in descending order is the way to read what this query is telling us. Next, we're gonna look at and or or statements, which is a different way to actually extend the where clause. So in this query, we're going to select everything from our table, um, our states table, um, and we're going to select where the state equals ny once again. But we're going to have add another condition and create a chain of conditions. So in this case, it's where the state equals ny, and some theoretical number column is basically greater than 100. Right. So um, imagine this will meet the table will have to return or the query will have to return both conditions. So any rows that meet both these conditions will be returned. If they don't meet those conditions, they will not be returned. Um, if you want to do sort of more of an inclusive way, you can use or, right? So this is going to return any row where the state equals ny or the number equals 100. So these, these conditions might both be there. You might get a state that is Nevada or Arizona or Texas. And the number is greater than 100, so that is what this will look like. So it's sort of an, an or statement. And you can chain as basically many of these as you want together, as many ands and ors as you want to create your query. Uh, in and not in. And I, I like using these a lot because sometimes it feels like you might have to have multiple wheres, or let's say if you, you know, want to select like five states, do I need to have a where clause and this and that and that? Um, no, you don't. You can use in or not in is sort of the best uh, case here. So this is uh, the query syntax we have here. We select star from our table, have where the state, and this is in, and you put this in the two parentheses and you add your value separated by a comma. So you can add as many values as you want here. If you have two values, like the state is NY or CA, this is gonna return any row that meets these conditions, right? So you can, this will just return all the rows that match the state NY or CA, New York or California. Now, if you probably guessed it, not in is sort of the inverse of that. Um, it's going to return all the values where they don't match this. So New York, not California, all the rows that don't match that condition. And once again, you can have multiple conditions of these. You could have where a state not in and another set of conditions. So start to build upon how you limit and structure the, the data that's returned from your query in this case. Between is also another way to sort of write um, a conditional, um, sort of like a where clause. So this is where the number is between zero and 100. You might have thought, yeah, well, I have to use these, uh, you know, greater than, you know, zero and less than 100. No, you can use between. And it's a little bit easier to read as well. So it just, just tells us where, select star from our table, where the number is between zero and 100. Very easy to read and understandable. You can use this for dates. You can use this for strings or, you know, alphabet. You can see every state between, you know, Alabama and Connecticut and return all of those and do it that way too. So um, you can also uh, do this where, once again, not between. So anything that falls outside of this range, right? There's always a reverse way to do this. So you can certainly return the values that don't fall within that range as well. Like is sort of like a, a wild card query. So if you're looking across um, different strings, right, you can actually do this here. So this is a little bit different um, syntax. So let's walk through this in a little bit more detail. Once again, select star from table where the name is like, and then we have this, this string here with a sort of, uh, you know, the percent sign and new. So what this allows us, and it allows you to search for text patterns. And that parenthesis means basically look across the text and basically anything that is before that it doesn't matter, but we just want things that end in new. So if the city was some for some reason called York, you know, space new, that would match this condition. So this is the for basically results that end in new, and this capital N E W. 
You can also put that in a different position. So let's say we wanted things that start with new. And no matter what comes after that, it's going to return anything that starts with those first three letters, and then that's all it's going to look at. So that's where that percent sign comes in. And then finally, if you want it in the middle of that, you can look at that here and find anything where NEW falls within the middle there. There's different extensions in these different uh, SQL syntaxes and libraries for things that are do more advanced fuzzy searching and, and different operations in that realm too. So just be aware of that. This is the most basic version, but there's lots of other ways to do more of this fuzzy matching and searching of, of text and, and things like that. So the last one today is probably the most complex we'll cover in this video. So that's case and when. Case and when is basically um, sort of a, a logical operator. If you're familiar with like if else statements, you know, if this condition, then that, um, that's basically what case one does. So let's walk through this here. Um, so we have select star comma, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create this case when statement. So case when state equals MN or Minnesota, then I'm gonna basically return a new string called is Minnesota, else not Minnesota. Then we're gonna end our statement and then as, if you remember from the beginning, we can give this sort of alias name as is Minnesota. So what my table will do is return every column and then a new column called is Minnesota. And it will go across my state column and say, does this state, does the text in this field match MN? If it does, I'm gonna return something called is Minnesota text string or else not Minnesota. Right? And it's just gonna be a new column called is Minnesota with two values of text, either is or not Minnesota. Um, is Minnesota not Minnesota? That's really all it does. It's pretty, pretty simple, uh, but you can do some more complex things in here in terms of numbers and operations, and uh, we'll get how you use this with spatial SQL, but this is a pretty cool one that you can write these sort of operators, right? Uh, you can have as many conditions as you want. You know, you can have many as many case when thens, things like that, and pull those together. So there's a lot you can actually do with that. That's it for today. Um, there's a complete resources link below if you want to learn more about any of these topics. So I'll include places to go to dive deep, learn more, do some tutorials. Uh, but today is basically an overview of that. Uh, thanks for checking it out. I appreciate it. Um, and definitely keep an eye out for more videos in the future.